what are some of the best Yu-Gi-Oh decks to own right now? Big Dog, I know at this point in time, there is a lot of uncertainty, but these particular strategies have fit the trifecta. All of these decks that I'm going to talk to you about are really good if you play them correctly or for a reasonable price, perfect for the people that want to learn, and also Benless Brute. Holy crap, that, that's technically the quadfecta. Of course, Big Dog, I can't wait to read what you have to say about some powerful Yu-Gi-Oh decks that players need to pick up as well, and I'll even be putting personal deck lists on my Patreon as a special thank you for helping me pay my editors. Let's go ahead and jump on in. I know what you're thinking, but this is me thinking intently. Now, out of all of the strategies that I did look into, I don't think any of them come even close to Solomon Great in the Link department. Solomon Great is easily one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh strategies when it comes to Link summoning and does hit our trifecta here. It is a deck that is incredibly powerful. It just recently got a top at a YCS event, but it's also a strategy that is still fairly accessible. Most of the cards are easy to get, as well as being a strategy that is fire, so it's been getting support over the past year and will continue to get support. Cards like Promethean Princess didn't just help out decks like Fire Kings and Snake Eyes, it was actually crazy for Solomon Great. A lot of people say that the deck ends on a Nibiru token. Now with Promethean, Nibiru is nothing. The deck is perfect for beginners because it teaches the value of Link Summoning, but also excellent for advanced players because it does have a lot of nuance and allows you to be able to play through some of the toughest cards in the games being used right now. You can say there's somebody out there getting a salad tossed by this deck, and it's not nice. No diddy though. There's not only to mention that the strategy is getting a new card in Code of Soul, this card is expected to take Solomon Great to a whole nother level, and it's already incredibly powerful right now. So if you do want a Link strategy, this may be the bet. But let's say Link summoning just might not be your thing. It's perfectly fine. I'm more of an old school dude myself. I love fusion summoning. What's that? Fusion summoning, you say? I remember when I used to fuse Dark World Thorns and Silver Fang for Flower Wolf. Those were the good old days. If you're a player just getting back into the game or want to take it back to the basics and the new stuff all confuses you, then you can always go back to the basics with fusion summoning. It's actually really cool that Konami has not abandoned its very first extra deck mechanic, and Chimera, I think, embodies just that. Old school Yu-Gi-Oh! and Fusion Summoning. It's actually some of my most favorite cards. Now, competitively speaking, over the last few months, Chimera isn't doing too hot in the main circuit right now. But I think that a lot of people just flat out forget that the Illusion strategy isn't even a year old. And anytime we get more Illusion monsters, this deck immediately gets stronger, but more importantly, Chimera is a deck that is very fluid because you technically have a searchable, recurrable polymerization in your deck through Chimera Fusion. Anytime a new fusion monster gets made, as long as the requirements are fairly generic, the options are almost limitless for this deck. The deck also has a ton of draw power and disruptive power, and the best thing about it is that there's so many different variants. There's a Chimera Horus, the Chimera Branded, and even a Chimera deck that's pure or ones that run a Fright for package. When I say the options are limitless, the options are genuinely limitless. It almost feels like playing Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day when you can put some of your favorite cards in and seeing that the Illusion monsters are basically retrains of some of those old school Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters, it feels even better. But what Chimera players are really waiting on is the new Diabells of the Original Sin from the Legacy of Destruction set that comes out this month. This card is actually set to change the entire fortunes of the Chimera strategy, giving them another disruptive piece to be able to combat the meta. So in essence, while Chimera may not be at its strongest right now, it definitely has support coming into the future and will continue to receive support throughout the course of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Or future. Present. Past. Who cares? It's Chimera! Speaking of old school, if you were born when Yu-Gi-Oh came out to the US, that makes you 22, which, I mean, you're old enough to drink now. But if that's the case, you Zoomers probably didn't grow up in fusion summoning. You probably more than likely grew up on the best anime ever, Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds. Game on, get your game on. Game, wait, that's the wrong one. Going fast makes me feel alive. My heart beats in hyperdrive. 
Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds is my all-time favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. And as you guys already know, there is a deck that is inspired off of it that is fairly strong if you're looking into synchros. I think Red Dragon Archfiend is the best available pure synchro deck if that's what you're looking into. Now, as of right now, Red Dragon Archfiend has no major competitive success, but when you consider how cheap the Yu-Gi-Oh! strategy is in comparison to what it can do, you would be pretty happy with the result that you get. And the cool thing about it is that this Synchro deck still stays true. Unlike some other strategies, you're still special summoning Red Dragon Archfiend. Unlike hero decks, not summoning Avian and Burst Critics. Shame on you guys. I think Konami did an excellent job making this strategy viable, and the cooler thing about it is that it's true to its roots. Red Dragon Archfiend is built to win on turns two or three, depending on if you went first or second. It reminds me back in college when I used to tell them, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. You get three strokes out of me. I mean, th three clut, you know what I meant. <laughs> And another amazing thing about Red Dragon Archfiend is that it is getting future support. Konami keeps subtly releasing Red Dragon Archfiend support, and while I will admit most of it is okay at best, some of it's been really good. And you best believe anytime Konami releases a Dark Dragon Synchro Monster, we're doing the Birdman Hand Rub, because that is secretly support for Red Dragon Archfiend, a strategy that is only inhibited by that restriction. Basically what I'm saying here, Big Dog, is that you get a cheap, nostalgic synchro deck for you Zoomers that also just so happens to sneakily get stronger because Konami doesn't pay attention to what cards they release from time to time. The crazy thing is I even have a Red Dragon Archfiend deck profile that you guys can go ahead and check out, as well as a duel against a tier zero deck showcasing on how powerful it can be. And while there isn't a lot of great synchro decks, synchros are thriving alongside links. I really wish that Xseed monsters would do a little bit better because they have a ton of potential. Take for example, Cash Tira. This strategy is actually really cool once you get past the Arise Heart drama. Arise Heart? That is everything! For Master Duel players coming over, we actually do enjoy Cash Tira right now. This strategy is incredibly balanced and way less annoying. And Cash Tira not only makes an excellent use of Exceed monsters, it makes a very good use of rank seven Exceed monsters. There's some pretty good cards like number 11 Big Eye or Dark Arm Dragon of Annihilation that allows you to get some pretty good effects. Cash Tira is easily the go-to Exceed Yu-Gi-Oh deck that you should be looking at. And I actually have a video on that too. Ironically enough, this is the deck that I used to be able to destroy the meta and got another invite with this Yu-Gi-Oh! season. But allow me to give you a bonus archetype because I am not sure when there's going to be more rank 7 monsters or if there's ever going to be more cash tier support. I think that Goblin Biker may genuinely be a really good deck. Now, Goblin Miker has a ton of potential for a few things. It is an Xseed based deck, but if more people start playing Xseed Yu-Gi-Oh cards, then Goblin Miker only gets stronger as it allows you to be able to detach material from those monsters as well. Goblin Biker is also getting more support in Legacy of Destruction. It's not the most insane support in the world, but it is very good support. Put that with, we already have some really good level three monsters that can easily summon themselves to the side of the field to help support Goblin Biker. I think that this deck is criminally underlooked right now and can be really powerful for Xseed players. And I know that that's already technically five, but allow me to wrap this up with another strategy just in case you're moving on to the dark side. Hypothetically, let's say you don't like the extra deck. To be honest, I don't even know why you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh because even GOAT format uses an extra deck. So I don't know what you're talking about. Let's say hypothetically, you want to play a deck that doesn't require the extra deck because maybe you're beginning. I'm gonna be optimistic here. Horus Stun is actually incredibly good. Now, ironically, stun Yu-Gi-Oh decks don't necessarily get support, at least not directly. And it's mainly because stun Yu-Gi-Oh decks are typically a mash of stun-like cards. Take, for example, monsters like Fossil Dyn Apache Cephalo or Vanity's Fiend and don't necessarily have an archetype. But I will say that Konami will continue to make degenerate cards. And that's where the Horus cards kind of blend the line between degeneracy and actually being able to play competent Yu-Gi-Oh. I think that the Horus monsters are completely insane. They're one of the most powerfully underlooked cards in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! As your Horus cards can summon themselves to the side of the field as long as you have King Sarcophagus, and King Sarcophagus protects your Horus monsters. 
Basically, you play some real old school Yu-Gi-Oh and say that my monsters are bigger than yours and no, it ain't cold that night. Hey guys, if you know, you know. Now the stunt element of the strategy can be explored in various ways. You can play cards like Skill Drain to shut down monster effects, since Horus monsters are just naturally stronger and don't necessarily need their effects. You can even combine it with cards like Vanity's Emptiness, Vanity's Fiend, since Horus monsters don't use their effects to summon, and even your favorite cards like Inspector Border and Fossil Dino Apache Cephalo. Overall, the choice is up to you. Now, I will tell you this, if you want to be able to lose friends as fast as possible, then outside of playing Fluander East, Stun might be your way to go. It is a strategy that people like the least because it does prevent them from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! But there are people that just want to see the world burn. And I personally think that all of those strategies that I just mentioned are some of the best strategies you can have under this pretense. But of course, if you have some strategies that you want to mention, go ahead and post them in the comment section and I'll actually be reading them on my Twitch today at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. As always, Big Dog, I hope you are having an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next video.